Hello, my name is Michael Wilde, and I'm here to talk to you today about Substance Painter and its use of Asus CG with OCIO. I've been a VFX artist for nearly 10 years now, modelling and texturing on a number of films and currently work as a senior texture artist at ILM London. I also make YouTube tutorials covering all sorts of 3D topics like this series here. Dealing with colour space and Asus workflows are a vital part of being a VFX artist for film and TV. So in this three-part series, I'm going to explain what colour spaces are and why they're so important, how Substance Painter handles Asus CG with its implementation of OCIO, and finally, how to fit Substance Painter into your Asus CG pipeline at home. So let's get into it. Firstly, I want to stress that colour management is a complex topic. We can't cover everything in a five minute video, but it's really important to have at least a base level understanding since colour space issues pop up a lot. So if you find yourself wanting something more in depth than these videos get, I've provided some really fantastic resources in the video description. We'll be diving into Substance Painter in part two, but before we get there, it's best to break down a bit of terminology so you're comfortable when you get to texturing. So what is a colour space? In its broadest term, a colour space is a range of colours which we can map out and define. The way we define them is on this overly sci-fi sounding CIE chromaticity diagram. You may have seen one of these before. This graph shows all the chromaticities that are visible to the human eye. Chromaticities are slightly different to colours, but for the sake of this beginner's video, I'm going to simplify it and refer to them as colours going forward. So how do we define a colour space on this graph? Well, a colour space needs its primary colours. With VFX, due to the nature of how screens create light and colour with red, green and blue lights, we use RGB primaries, unlike, say, printing, which uses CMYK. This is referred to as our colour model. We can plot the primaries down and draw lines between them, which produces a triangle enclosing every colour that can be represented within our colour space. This triangle is referred to as a colour gamut. One colour space that you may have already heard of is sRGB, and that's not to be confused with the very closely named RGB, the colour model which we were just speaking about. So sRGB stands for standard red, green, blue, and it's actually the gamut that I just drew on the CIE graph. sRGB is the colour space most online images are encoded with, and it's how most monitors display images too. It's not a linear colour space, and to explain what that important term means, we're going to have to get a little tangential. The way human eyes perceive values of light is not equal. If you were to look into an intense light, like a bright sky, it's very difficult to pick out differences in values in the clouds or the sun. It all just looks super bright. But if you sit in a dark room, it's really easy to pick out small differences in value due to the way our vision works. We can perceive much more variation in lower light than we can bright light. If you wanted to, you could plot that onto a graph and it may look something like this. Since computer monitors are just lots of little lights, our eyes perceive them in the same way. sRGB images take advantage of this, and they give more space to darker values which our eyes are more likely to perceive. This is often referred to as the gamma curve or the colour spaces transfer function. And sRGB has a gamma curve of 2.2, which we can plot onto a graph. If we go to a brightness value of 50%, it's actually only a pixel value of about 20%. That's why we call sRGB non-linear. If we do want our pixel values to be equal to their brightness, we would need the image to handle data in a straight line like this, but more on that later. sRGB sounds great, but what about this ASUS that I keep hearing so much about? Well, ASUS is a color management system created by the Academy. Yes, that Academy, to standardize the color pipeline for film and TV since filmmakers went digital. Since film can be shot with a variety of different cameras these days, all which may see colours slightly differently, ASUS helps to unify the data from multiple sources and also make sure footage can be archived well for future use. ASUS itself isn't a colour space, it's a colour management system, but one component of that management is the all too similarly named ASUS CG colour space. The ASUS workflow using ASUS CG has quickly become the standard way to texture and render your 3D assets in VFX. And if you're working in a VFX studio, applying to one or studying at university, it's something you need to be comfortable with. There are other ASUS color spaces, but for VFX texturing, ASUS CG is the only one we concern ourselves with. Before I overload your brain, let's wrap this video up by explaining what makes ASUS CG so good for VFX and why it matters in Substance Painter. If we hop back to our CIE graph and plot out ASUS CG on there, we can see how large the range or gamut of colours that it encompasses is. It's almost the whole visible spectrum, unlike sRGB. 
Such a wide gamut helps unify all resources that we may use in VFX so that they all play nicely together. On a single asset, you may be using compressed JPEGs from the internet, on-set raw high bit depth photographs of an actor, and black and white substance procedurals, so we want our pipeline to be able to hold them all and make them all look correct. Also, unlike sRGB, ASUS CG is a linear color space. What does that mean and why is it important? Well, if I were to plot it alongside the gamma curve of sRGB, we can see that its values are equal to its intensity. Basic maths teaches us that if we add 50% and 50% together, we should have 100%. But if I double the pixel value that we have 50% along these two transfer functions, only the linear one gives the visually correct result of 100%. Doing mathematical calculations with nonlinear images would give us incorrect results. 3D packages are doing really complex maths behind the scenes with our textures, so working in linear is incredibly important for them to calculate and render everything as it should look. All of this matters in Substance Painter for one really simple and important reason. We want what we see in our Substance viewport to be what we see at render time in other programs, which we're going to cover in the next two parts of this video series. I've thrown a lot at you here, so before we go, let's quickly summarize everything we've covered. Color spaces are definable groups of colors which we can plot onto a graph. Two important characteristics of them are their range of colors, the gamut, and how we perceive their brightness, the transfer function. You may already be familiar with the sRGB color space used on images on the internet. Its transfer function is nonlinear, meaning it doesn't allocate the same amount of data across the brightness of its pixels. It's often referred to as a gamma 2.2 curve. The ASUS color management system was created to unify the digital film pipeline, and for VFX, we use the ASUS CG color space, which is part of it. It has a linear transfer function. So join me in part two to see how we use OCIO to work with ASUS inside a Substance Painter.